so that we'll be not be asking for piecemeal supernatural that all the time we will say our whole existence and sustenance is supernatural one god in the beginning god created heaven and earth supernatural to the end of that heaven and earth will be supernatural till then he sustains the heaven and earth with the word of his power hebrews 11:3 and hebrews hebrews 11:1 and hebrews 1:3 and the end is supernatural with the coming of our lord jesus christ three the word of god is given by the inspiration of god will you say inspiration of god that is supernatural that is 2 timothy 3:16 so the the giving of the word the writing of the word uh, infallibly and its preservation its transmission it has come to us up to this day supernaturally amazing isn't it it's trustable it's coming to us the way it was delivered now if we start a test if i ask lilian to tell a secret to lilian and lilian tells it to sean and it goes you know the, you know it is by the time it say it goes to roshan and roshan speaks it out there'll be obviously some we have done this group game isn't it lilian 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 might have started saying i love melanga so much by the time it goes to roshan it may come out in a different way i love lilian so much or something like that so but the fact that the word of god was delivered to us and it is uh, it was taken down uh, it was written down and it is preserved transmitted to us the way jesus spoke or moses spoke absolutely supernatural and the study of that supernatural transmission and preservation of the world is is called textual criticism it's a different branch of science so that's the word of god and it's a, when we apply it we have supernatural effects from god's word how how many have you experienced that supernatural effect of god's word so its application its power is now it is living and active no other word is living and active only god's word is living and active it says what it claims because the author of god's word is alive praise the lord fourthly the whole plan of redemption is supernatural that god came in human form 1 timothy 3:16 great is yeah great is the mystery of godliness it is supernatural vindication of god's nature it is supernatural entire plan of redemption his sinless life his miracles that prove his deity his crucifixion and his resurrection is completely supernatural we don't have one relic from jerusalem which is very sad isn't it even for exposition not even one relic said we are very glad that he resurrected toto and it said that his resurrection is supernatural fifthly fifthly our born again experience is supernatural we enter this supernatural framework it's a little warm here and we enjoy his life receive his life that endless life hebrews 7:15 not the power of a carnal commandment but the power of a life that never ends praise the lord that is supernatural all of the old testament said wages of sin is death and the new testament says but will you say but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ we experience it we are preserved by it he lives in us supernatural 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 and sixthly his church is supernatural across tribes tongues and nations the 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 the, the low caste the high caste educated uneducated poor the rich every uh, the zealot the tax gatherer all in one church praise the lord it's supernatural the existence of the church is proof that christ was which really is praise the lord all this is supernatural and then the lord's prayer promises us other things that supernaturally comes to us forgiveness is supernatural i want to read quickly the number of times the lord jesus christ mentions forgive forgiveness is more than all the epistles put together the number of times the lord mentions supernatural in the four gospels is more than all the times god the epistles speak forgiveness so the lord's heartbeat was forgiveness 
if anybody missed the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, on the cross dying, he shouted out for the whole world to hear, Father, forgive. You will you say that with me? Father, forgive. That's the signature tune and tone of Jesus' ministry. Everybody knows, even those who hate him know, this is what Jesus Christ said, this is what Christians are supposed to do, and everybody knows this is what Christians are doing. Isn't it? That's our, they shall be known because they forgive. Their enemies, those who do wrong to them, they shall be known because of forgiveness. So Matthew 6, 12, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Matthew 6, 14, if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. 6.15, but if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Uh, 9.6, Matthew, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, rise, pick up your bed and go home. Then Peter came to, uh, up and said to him, Matthew 18.21, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? And uh, Peter being impetuous, he suggested as many as seven times. But the Lord Jesus said 70 times seven. Uh, 1835, so also my heavenly father will do to every one of you. If you do not forgive your brother from your heart, that comes from the story of the unjust steward, rather the, the, the man who did not forgive the small steward. So many references to forgiving. Luke 6.37 Judge not, you will not be judged. Condemn not, you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And Luke 23, 34, I just said, Father, forgive them. For they not, know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the Great Commission has this. John 20, 23. If you forgive the sins of any they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Forgiveness is withheld to us if, he, if we withhold forgiveness to others. John 20, 23. Now Mark 2. A story about forgiveness. And again, Mark chapter 2. He entered Capernaum after some days. Ask your neighbor why after some days. It was heard that he was in the house. Now we are, we really want all of this area to hear that Jesus is in this house. We are strategically placed in this intersection uh, on, if I, if I face Serpentine Road, on my right side is the better side of this area, the more affluent people, better houses, and from right from that area is, of course, where the cricket matches are played in Vanatha Mulla and those people desperately need help. So when we first came here, most of the churches in Colombo who knew us were very worried, how is Lalit going to survive in this place? And you know Buddhist monks paid us a curtsy visit and we still survive. Uh, and being here necessitated that we pray. When Bandhu and Puruni came here, uh, first they, they stayed here, they were murder. There were two gang warfares were meeting here, chaps from Gothami Road and chap from Magazine Road. But thank God, with prayer, that began to recede away. We still have to break through into that area. But we are here. That we are, our desire is that it will get to be known that Jesus is in the house. Now I asked, and we read this, Mark 2, 1. He entered Capernaum after some days. Why some days? Because the last time he entered Capernaum, he went to the synagogue and he disturbed a regular church goer inside the synagogue. He went there and by his presence, this regular synagogue goer, his demon manifested. And the demon came out and there was trouble in the synagogue. Do you think Jesus got invited to that synagogue again? Probably not, isn't it? Next time he went into a house. My suggestion is this might have been Peter's house. That's just a suggestion. And it came to be known that Jesus is in the house. I'm really praying that our houses would be known. The message that goes out from our house would be Jesus in the house. Will you say Jesus in the house? Jesus in the house. And messages get communicated in different ways. Good cooking gets communicated by fragrance. Isn't it? 
how many of you prefer the good cooking smell of the neighbor's house? Hmm? Hmm? Hmm. Yeah. Smell communicates. Then sounds communicate. What people see communicates that Jesus is in the house. And it was heard that he was in the house. Let's pray briefly that each of you will be able to start a little meeting in your house. So that people would come and know Jesus is in the house. Just consider this possibility. Lord Jesus, is it possible to start a meeting in the house? Meeting in my house. So that it will be known that Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the house. Consider this earnestly. Lord, I am praying this evening, every one of your children here, every home here will start a meeting that will make the neighbors know Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the house. Certainly the anointing. Certainly the family prayer altar. And that they will open the door of their house once a month, every other week, every week that people may come in because they have been invited to know that Jesus is in the house. Lord, this will come, this revival will come. First century Christianity, that houses opening up, every house opened out, that we will say, my house is not private property, my house is God's house. God is welcome to welcome others into my house. Lord, I open my house that people may come to my home and come to know Jesus is in the house. This is the message. We want to go out of our house. What a blessed place our house would be. Jesus is in the house. Shall we say again? Jesus is in the house. It was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together. Jesus is very attractive. Don't think people don't like Jesus. It is our reticence. We feel defeated. We feel our self-respect, our dignity may get injured if people reject Christ. No. Jesus is very attractive. Immediately many gathered together because they heard Jesus is in the house. So that there was no longer room to receive, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Miracles hadn't even started. Merely because Jesus was there and he was speaking the word, people came to see and people came to hear. And they came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come, now see, this man must have been paralyzed for some time, but his friends did not desert him. So it's good to have friends of all weather, that friends who do not forsake you in, in your difficulty, not fair weather, friends, friends who stick closer to you than a brother. They are there in your adversity, and they get closer to you in adversity. These four friends were like that. They didn't desert their paralyzed friend. Uh, they, they didn't say, you sinner, you deserve this. Uh, and shame comes with diseases. Shame comes with long-term diseases. There are many diseases people don't even want to talk about. In, in our time where, when we were in the ward, it is still like that. We never write tuberculosis. We write COX, K-O-C-H. That is the chap who discovered the mycobacterium. We never write leprosy, we write Hansen's. Because those have a stigma, isn't it? Uh, so this man had, uh, had fallen ill, but his friends didn't forsake him. His friends carried him. They stuck with him. So we need to develop friendships that last through illness, difficult times, when our reputation departs, isn't it? We need to have friends who will not forsake us when the worst happens to us. We, will not, we, should, we need to have friends who will not forsake us when bad things happen to us. We should, not, we, we should have friends who will not give up on us in our adversity, in our bad times, when, uh, when we commit terrible sin and bring shame upon everybody else, still. We must have friends who will say, because of Jesus, we are with him. Do you have friends like that? Are you a friend like that? Are we friends only when things are okay? There's a good reputation. Can we be friends with people who 